First-person dungeon crawlers are among the oldest of video game genres, and for a while it seemed like most developers had forgotten all about them, left in the dust in favor of the more flashbang-boom style of modern RPGs. But in the indie space, no genre is left behind. Before we jump into this list, I want to give a special thanks to Where Am I? Help for donating at Patreon. If you'd like to support this channel and maybe get your name in a video, stick around to the end to find out how. But without further ado, here's a list of 10 indie first-person dungeon crawlers that you can play right now. Hand of Doom, developed by Torpal Duke and published by the fine folks at Dread XP, was released in May of 2023 and is an interesting mix between a first-person dungeon crawler and an FMV game. So you've got a mashup of polygonal environments and monsters and then a bunch of digitized actors and costumes. It may look a bit cheesy at times, but that's the point. And it nails that style of early 90s adventure games so well. As for the gameplay, you're an apprentice wizard and you travel the land either slaying or befriending the Doom Lords. The spell system is based on learning different words that can then be put together to cast different spells. It sort of reminds me of the rune system of magic in Ultima Underworld, and it's neat that you can choose to follow what you're told and kill the Doom Lords, or choose to side with them. This also changes the story. Hand of Doom was a bit buggy at launch, but some patches have cleaned things up considerably since then. If you're nostalgic for FMV style games and dungeon crawlers, then check out Hand of Doom. Vaporum, developed by Fatbot Games SRO, is a real-time grid-based dungeon crawler set in a sci-fi, steampunk-inspired world. Since combat is in real time, you'll be making use of your strafing abilities to avoid attacks. While I personally prefer turn-based combat with grid-based movement, there are a few titles like Legend of Grimrock and this game that grab my interest. Vaporum takes place in an underwater tower facility, so comparisons to Bioshock are inevitable. There are tons of notes and documents that can be found as you explore to unravel the story, but the meat and potatoes here are the exploration and combat. You have only a single character to manage throughout the game, but that doesn't mean you'll be limited to just taking on one enemy at a time. The encounters can get overwhelming if you're not careful. Careful. You can stop time though, which can help you manage some of the combat. Exploration feels satisfying, with a lot of secret areas and alternate paths to explore. There are also a lot of exploration puzzles, such as pressure plates and timing-based challenges. Some of them are pretty devious too. And if you like this game, you can check out its prequel, Vaporum Lockdown. It's also just as good as the first, and the two of them go on sale quite often on Steam. So you'll definitely be able to find a deal if these seem like something you're into. I covered the demo of the sequel to this game in my earlier video about upcoming dungeon crawlers, so I figured I should give the first game its own time to shine. Legends of Amberland The Forgotten Crown is a grid-based, blobber-style, heroic fantasy dungeon crawler. Developed by Silver Lemur Games, Amberland was inspired by the likes of Dungeon Master, Eye of the Beholder, and the early Might and Magic games. It keeps things pretty light in the story department. It's a classic fantasy adventure where you take your band of seven heroes around the world, doing good deeds and fighting evil. And there's nothing wrong with that. This is a fun, relaxing dungeon crawl. Not to say that it's overly easy. Combat is turn-based, but fast-paced. You don't have to worry about inventory management, and there's quick travel. The game doesn't really have any grinding either, so it's more about just going through the different quests and constantly progressing. Some people might get turned off by the simple presentation, especially if you've never really played some of the older dungeon crawlers that I mentioned before. But trust me when I say that this game has a lot of modern conveniences that make it a blast to play. I played through it a couple years ago and remember getting sucked in for hours at a time. But then, it's also breezy enough where I could grab a coffee and do a bit of questing while taking a break from work. Amberland was also released on the Switch as well, so you can get your dungeon crawl on anywhere. I really can't say enough good things about Legends of Amberland, and there's a sequel coming soon with a demo you can check out, so if you like it as much as I did, there's more on the way. Inferno Beyond the Seventh Circle, developed by 68K Studios, is a grid-based, turn-based, 
single character dungeon crawler with a dark and demonic art style. The atmosphere in this one is oppressive and horrific. You can build your character in any way you see fit, with tons of skills and magical fields to invest in, and you improve each skill through use. No arbitrary skill points here. You want to get better at punching things? Just keep punching things. And while combat is turn-based, there aren't random encounters. Every enemy can be seen on the field map, so you can prepare for each fight. The magic system works on runes and magical formulas, and there are 70 different combinations to create a variety of different spells from different schools such as black and white magic, elemental magic, conjuration, and necromancy. The game also has survival mechanics. You'll need to find water and food to keep your stamina up. You'll also need firewood to make campfires to keep yourself well rested. There are lots of exploration-based puzzles to solve, and there are settlements with NPCs and various side quests to take on. The map is huge too, with several side areas to explore and secrets to find. My favorite part of Inferno Beyond the Seventh Circle is the enemy designs though. Some of these creatures are horrifying, and it's not an easy game either. You're really going to have to plan out your builds and think about your survival. Once you get the hang of it though, it's a lot of fun. 68K Studios also has a new game that I featured in the upcoming indie dungeon crawler video, Ludus Mortis. So if you thought that one looked cool and want to see more of the studio's design philosophies, check out Inferno Beyond the Seventh Circle. Ruzar the Lifestone, developed by Hammerglass Studios, is the oldest game on this list, coming out in 2015. I tried to keep most of the games fairly recent, like within the last five years, but I couldn't help but mention this one. As you may know if you've seen some of my other videos, I love snowy environments and ice levels in games, and Ruzar takes place in a snow-swept mountain landscape. While you'll spend most of the game underground in the caverns and ruins inside the mountain range, the beginning takes place in this barren, snowy area with frost tinged the edges of the screen, and that's what immediately made me fall in love with this one. But anyway, yeah, this is another grid-based movement, real-time combat dungeon crawler. Again, not exactly my favorite, but I make exceptions for the really good ones, and Ruzar the Lifestone is really good. You've got a single character to manage here with a lot of skills to invest in. Exploration feels incredibly satisfying, and everything is just really well put together. Aside from that snowy setting, there's nothing here that really sets this one apart, but it just executes everything so well. And hey, if you make through the game and want even more, there's a challenge map DLC that you can buy. I've never checked it out, but it's there if you just can't get enough Ruzar. Now let's dive into the depths of space as a mercenary adventurer, working for a mega corporation, hunting bounties, and screwing over rival crews. Starcrawlers, developed by Juggernaut Games, has a sleek sci-fi style that's easy to fall in love with. It's a grid-based dungeon crawler with turn-based combat, where you'll recruit a party of characters with eight different classes. There are plenty of characters, each with their own unique personalities, and who you choose to take with you will change the course of the story. The game also has an interesting time unit system where different moves take different amounts of time, and you'll see a turn list at the top of the screen. Choosing faster actions could mean the difference between taking out an enemy or suffering through their upcoming attack. I really like these kinds of battle systems in turn-based games, as it allows you to be much more strategic with your choices in combat. The dungeons are all procedurally generated, which will keep things interesting on repeat playthroughs, and like I mentioned, the story changes depending on your party members, so it's worth playing through multiple times if you get hooked on this one. Starcrawlers is one of the more unique dungeon crawlers on this list thanks to its setting and time unit turn-based combat. It also has great writing and characters. It has a pretty good amount of difficulty options too, along with a permadeath feature, so you can make it as hard or as easy as you'd like. Definitely one of my favorites. There's also a sequel, Star Crawler's Chimera, which still has grid-based movement but has a more action-oriented combat system. A neat take on things, but I still prefer the original. Despite its utterly generic name, the quest is anything but. Developed by Redshift, the quest has all the trappings of an old-school grid-based dungeon crawler with a hand-drawn world similar to Daggerfall. That's not where the Elder Scrolls comparisons end, either. More than any other game on this list, the quest just lets you loose in a fantasy world. It really is like a grid-based Elder Scrolls. You create a single character with a variety of classes to choose from, and after character creation, you're just dropped outside of the starting town and are left to your own devices. Explore town, talk to NPCs, and figure out what's what. The amount of freedom is fantastic. If you really just want to get lost in a huge open world, then the quest won't disappoint. There's a lot to play around with in terms of skills, spells, and alchemy. 
You can read books, break into houses, or just discuss topics with the wealth of NPCs you'll find. There's also a day-night cycle and a weather system. Tons of dungeons to explore and quests to undertake. It's a long game with an interesting main story, but if you still can't get enough, there's a DLC pack called Islands of Ice and Fire, which introduces new areas, new monsters, and a new main storyline along with tons of other challenges. The Quest is a fantastic fantasy role-playing experience, and it seems not that many people know about it, which is a real shame. Don't let the boring name fool you. The Quest is epic in scale. Devil Spire, developed by three people, Ethero Sumi, Lucas Perdomo, and Lucas Bresson, is a first-person, free-movement, procedurally generated dungeon crawler with some roguelite elements. You create a single character and explore a stone tower that mysteriously appeared in the land. There are plenty of traps and interactive objects, as well as NPCs to converse with. I especially like the cutout style of graphics for enemies and NPCs here. A few games on this list, like Hand of Doom and The Quest, use this style, and it's always fun to see. The devs say Devil Spire is inspired by the Kingsfield series, with some heretic mixed in, and it feels like that for sure. They also stuff the game full of different equipment to try out. There are 24 different weapon classes, 48 spells, and 60 equipment enhancements. You can also choose from 10 different types of dungeons, each with their own unique enemies and bosses. And there are 6 game modes, including a 100 floor gauntlet to attempt to power through. Devil Spire is an intense experience, and easily one of the most brutal games on the list. So if this sounds like something you're down with, you can check out the demo on Steam before jumping into the full game. Lunacid, developed by Kira LLC, is a game that I covered in my very first video on this channel. You can go back and watch it if you want something a little bit more in-depth. But it's not that much more in-depth than what I'm going to say here. It was my first video after all. But anyway, Lunacid is a free movement, real-time combat dungeon crawler inspired by From Software's Kingfield and Shadow Tower series. And the game nails that vibe to a T with its PlayStation-style visuals and cryptic vibes. However, the game fixes a few of the issues that some people have with those old FromSoft games. Namely, you don't move as if you're wading through a knee-high swamp. It's also not nearly as mean as FromSoft games, with only a couple of traps that will leave you confused and dead. The overall vibe of Lunacid is surreal and anachronistic. You might think this is a dark fantasy world, what with the dungeons and the monsters and the swords and sorcery, but there are videotapes and CRTs and a modern looking town in the opening cutscene. It's hard to tell what exactly is going on here, but it's got something to do with the moon, which also gives it some Bloodborne vibes. Combat feels smooth and magic is immensely fun to play around with. It's also really powerful. Lunacid is still in early access as of the making of this video, but it's nearing completion, and it's only $6.99 USD, which is a steal for the amount of content that's available for it. It's a lot of fun, and has especially satisfying exploration, so do yourself a favor and check out Lunacid. We've seen a lot of fantasy and even some sci-fi and horror on the list so far, so I think it's time to delve into the surreal. Disillusion, developed by Disillusion Dev, is a grid-based dungeon crawler with turn-based combat, and mechanically it's pretty straightforward. But take some time to climb this strange tower in the middle of the seemingly abandoned town that you start in, and things will begin to get really, really weird. Combat remains relatively straightforward for games of this type, but it's not all about fighting. You can see all of the enemies and NPCs in the world, so there are no random encounters, and some enemies can be talked out of fighting. There's a weird internal logic to the conversations, so answering their questions and engaging in these talks may seem head-scratching at first, but you'll slowly start to catch on. Or maybe you won't, and it will mostly be a guessing game. That really doesn't take away from the fun, though. The exploration also starts to go in strange directions as you progress deeper into the mysterious tower. There are branching paths through different doors and teleporters that will take you to totally separate areas, and several of the characters have side quests that span several different locations. It's a deep and experimental dungeon crawler for sure. Depending on your choices and what locations you stumble across, you'll also discover four different story paths through the game. Disillusion is the very definition of a hidden gem, and more people should know about it. There's also a sequel in the works, Disillusion ST, with more of a 3D, 32-bit vibe to its presentation. So if you're looking for something a bit different in your dungeon crawler, then check out Disillusion. 
And that's it. 10 indie first person dungeon crawlers that you can play right now. If you like this video, hit the like button. And I know there are plenty of other indie dungeon crawlers out there that I didn't mention. So if you know of any that are worth checking out, leave a comment. Also, subscribe to the channel. I have more indie previews and retro reviews that you can watch. In the description below, you can find links to the Steam store pages for all of the games that I mentioned in this video, as well as links to my Patreon and Twitter. And speaking of the Patreon, it's been around for a few months now, but I haven't really mentioned it until recently. But yeah, I have a Patreon. Anyone who donates a dollar or more gets to watch new videos a day or two before they go public on YouTube. Also, if you donate at the $5 tier or higher, you'll get your name in upcoming videos and there are other tiers as well so yeah I love making these videos and I'm going to continue to do so no matter what but if you want to support the channel patreon really helps me out that's it for now until next time indie first-person dungeon crawlers check them out dungeon chill out